It's sort of inevitable if you restore vintage red lines for any length of time, you eventually will come across cars with broken or missing hoods. In the past, I've tried various methods of gluing these hoods back in, but I've always wanted a more permanent fix. This has led me to figuring out how to solder on die cast, something I've been working on for well over a year now, and something I feel I have enough of a grasp on that I can do a video on it in a way that will allow others to quickly pick up the technique and begin soldering their own customs. Now I've already cleaned up this Mustang body. This is one of the many cars I'm working on for Chris if you saw my video on the 18 Mustangs. So now I need to plate it in copper, but not the hood. To plate it, I'm using a $50 plating kit that you can buy from Micromark, and I'll leave a link below. The kit will plate copper directly to die cast without issue. The only thing I'll need to do before is to wash the car in a degreaser, something like acetone, brake cleaner, or zep degreaser if you want a safer non-flammable solution. Then all I have to do is dip the car in the plating solution with the copper wand to complete the circuit and begin plating the car. So while I plate this car, let's talk a little bit about soldering on die cast. It's taken a lot of practice and working with you guys, but eventually I've mastered the ability to solder directly to die cast with standard 60-40 10 lead solder. I say mastered as a joke. I'm able to do it, though you'll see here in a little bit that I can't do it reliably every time. My experience of soldering directly to die cast has shown that there's a very small window of opportunity to get it to work right. This really comes down to the amount of heat applied, but also to the amount of flux applied. The heat is really important. Too much and you'll burn up the flux and the solder won't stick, and too little heat and the solder won't stick no matter how much flux is applied. Tinning your soldering iron is also really important as it's the indicator that lets you know the solder is sticking and that you can start adding more solder. So what you're seeing now is me soldering all over this car. I apply flux to the clean metal and then apply a tin soldering iron. As the flux begins to boil off, I'll come in with the soldering wire and add a little bit more. If all goes well, the solder wets the surface and sticks to the die cast. Each of these soldering spots is done a little bit different. A little less flux here, or a little less heat there. You'll see why here in a second. I decided to solder in a copper rod to show that you can solder items directly to the metal if you wish. I made sure to build this up by applying solder to the metal first, and then soldering on the copper rod. It's extremely difficult to do this all in one go. In fact, I wasn't sure if I would have to pre-tin the copper rod to get it to stick, but luckily it wasn't necessary. So here's where the issues come in. You'll notice here that the solder I placed has already fallen off. Using the back of some tweezers, I'll try to remove the other solder, and I find that in this case, I can't remove it. But moving to the top and trying some other places, I'm able to remove most of the solder with ease. Checking on my rather ugly weld with the copper rod, I actually find that this is indeed stuck. In fact, quite firmly, I'm sure I'd have to bend the rod before the solder joint broke. So the lesson here is that you can get it to work, but if you miss that all-important small window of opportunity, then the solder won't stick. This is where the copper plating comes in. The copper widens the window of opportunity to the point that you're almost guaranteed the solder will stick. Here I'm soldering on a brass frame that I intend to make into a luggage rack. The process is exactly the same as before, the only difference is, is the car has been copper plated. I'll tack on the front of the rack and then move to tack on the back. The wet paper towel you see is to keep the solder joint on the rack cool while I solder the rest of the rack. Without the wet paper towel there is a chance the heat could move up the brass rod and soften the solder joint. Once the car cools down, the rack is firmly attached and it's not going anywhere. I can now sand down the solder joints and continue building the rack. So let's return to the Mustang, which is finished plating. I can remove it from the plating bath and wash it with some soap and water. After it dries, I can check to be sure that the hinges have plated, and indeed they have. Now I can replace the unplated hood in the body and then use some tape to hold it in place. It's very important to get the hood exactly where I want it because once it's soldered in, it's very difficult to change the position. After I have it where I want it, I can go about soldering. First apply some flux as you saw before and then add the solder. So the trick here is to solder the hinge without soldering the pegs in the hood. Remember that window of opportunity I keep bringing up? Well, here's where it becomes very useful. I want to seal in the hinge, but not solder the hood closed. I want it still to be able to open. To get this to happen, I didn't copper plate the hood, thus it's unlikely the solder will be able to stick to it. 
and instead just stick to the surrounding body. So right after the car cools off, the hood opens just like new, but is soldered in place and won't fall out as it had before. Now granted, I can do a lot prettier solder work when I'm not doing it through the camera screen, but I'm sure you get the idea. Hopefully you can see how useful this can be to repairing these broken hoods and to customizing in general. It takes some time and practice, but you get the hang of it pretty quick, especially if you copper plate the cars. Let me know what you think below, and if you have any tips or tricks to soldering in general. I'm still learning, and I enjoy hearing from people who have more experience than I do. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.